welcome to my 2023 fall and Halloween home tour. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me today and we are gonna go ahead and jump right in the tour because this is a long one. So grab yourself a little pumpkin spice latte and let's get started. All right, we are in my long tube room breezeway area that connects to the garage. I just hung this small little wreath that I DIY'd out here. I couldn't find a better place for it. Um, it's just a grapevine wreath that I added some leaves and ribbon to. So now we will head on in to the kitchen and dining area. And then on the other side of that door, I have a cinnamon broom. I think I picked this up on clearance last year and then I just added some little accoutrements to it. And then of course you guys know if you're a regular that I always like to do a coffee bar coffee station situation. So here is this year's setup. Definitely loving it. This little lamp is thrifted from a couple years ago and honestly I feel like this is one of my favorite Halloween pieces I have. And then I just have a little tiered tray with some decor. I got some chocolate covered espresso beans in there. Got some stir sticks that came from the dollar spot at Target many moons ago. And then in this Halloween jar I have a bunch of iced coffees. Um, this is my newly acquired Nespresso machine that my husband got me for our one year anniversary, which was the end of September. So that was a very nice gift and it has been put to good use. I love this little art print I got back here. This is from Etsy. I'm going to put as many links as possible in the description box. So make sure you hit that little drop down arrow. The cupboard might be kind of messy, but I have got oh, a bunch of them are in the dishwasher, but my Halloween mug collection is one of my prized possessions. These are all the hot coffees and the flavored coffees. And moving on over to the sink. Again, if you are a regular to my channel, you know I love to switch out my little cafe curtains here seasonally. So these are just fabric napkins. They're all a standard size. I get them almost all exclusively from Home Goods or TJ Maxx. I think I found these two years ago. I love the little jack-o'-lanterns. I've got some candy corn stained glass there. And then I've got my Wicked Apple Spooky Hand Soap. And just a little golden pumpkin towel down here. And then on the other side of the countertop, I put all of my spooky spatulas out in my crop container. I think this ghost one is my favorite. These came from, I think, Jillian Fabrics a few years ago. Over on my stove, I have my golden pumpkin trivet which jives nicely with my white teapot here. And now we are gonna move on over to the kitchen table area. I actually just got back from getting my nails done. Kind of obsessed with them. Of course I had to stop and get a little pumpkin spice. When it comes to usable areas and real estate in my house. I am not a fan of cluttering up those areas with decor and things that need to be moved constantly. So I like to keep it pretty simple. We actually don't really eat at the table very often. I will admit, but sometimes people use this for workspace. So I don't want to put a bunch of junk on it. I've got some faux maple leaf branches in there along with some real branches that came from my yard. I kind of intended to fill it up with more of these, which I still want to do. And then what I planned to do was put some little uh, hanging bats from them so they give a little bit more spooky vibes. We'll see if I get around to that. And then I am just burning this Yankee candle here. And then over yonder, we've got my China Hutch. And I don't think I've done a home tour yet where I have had this table. This I acquired last spring or summertime. 
what it was intended to be was to hold a bunch of house plants, which it is definitely going to be doing this winter when I bring a lot of them inside. But until then, I'm also going to be just using it for some seasonal decor so I can display a bunch of knickknacks here and not have to clog up the table, you know. So I've definitely got kind of a maximalist display here. There are some of my house plants back here. Uh, this thing needs some help, but I've got a mum that is getting ready to bloom. There is a mix of faux and real pumpkins on here. I got this little skeleton guy. I love him so much. We've got a candle and candle holder from Bath and Body Works. If anybody knows the name of this plant, please let me know in the comment section. I, know I gave one to my mother too, and I really have no idea what it is, but it's a nice low maintenance plant, and I would like to know what it's called. We've got a few different pumpkins back there. I painted the checkered one. I also DIY painted this spooky cat one. There's like a wicker lighted one. Got like a little glass jack o' lantern there. Lots of little doodads. This picture actually came out of Sam's office just for some temporary holiday magic. This guy's art, I'm gonna link him in the description. If you like spooky nostalgia, this guy's art is off the chain. And moving over to the China Hutch. I actually think this is my favorite Halloween China Hutch decor I've ever done. I started storing like a bunch of our liquor and stuff in here. So it just, it's nice to have things in here that are stored and like useful and mix in decor pieces. I think it just feels more balanced. So up top, we've got some wheat. I DIY'd this tiny little house a couple years ago. It was like some ugly chintzy one from the Dollar Tree and I DIY'd my own. I love it. This art print came from one of my best friends a few, probably more than a few years ago. Love that so much. I need to get some candles for that candelabra. Got a real pumpkin. This is a faux paper mache pumpkin I have intentions to do something decorative with. And then this little acorn bell thing. I picked up like sometime in the summer, it was like a mega clearance find. I also have intentions to zhuzh this up with some metallic gold paint, maybe add some ribbon, but I just thought it was so pretty. I love the little acorns. And let's look inside. So it's a very eclectic vibe, kind of natural harvest, witch, I would say. <laughs> this um, Disney spooky, silly symphony, that's what this is from. Like that old school cartoon with the dancing skeletons. I love these cocktail glasses so much. These are some little bottles that I distressed last year with the intentions of making uh, like spooky potion bottles with labels. I haven't yet got around to that either, but Still plan on doing that eventually. I actually like to leave this cracked a little bit to get some airflow in there. It smells really bad in there and I don't know why. <laughs> Let's move to the living room, shall we? All right, and here is my living room. Again, if you've been with me for a while, you know that these frames on my wall have been sitting empty for probably close to two years now, something like that. And I had all intentions of making sure there was artwork in them by the time I filmed this tour, but alas, it did not happen. I ordered some prints and of course the printer did not print them at the correct size. So, so hopefully by the next house tour, there will be prints in those. 
And the middle picture is actually a custom piece of artwork done of my three cats. One of them has passed now. You can see she's a little ghost up there. Um, so this is going to be a cat themed kind of gallery wall. And last year I purchased these two velvet burnt orange colored pillow covers. So I love these. I actually have not pulled out any of my Halloween pillows yet. I've got a few of them. I don't know if they're gonna make their way out at this point or not. And then I've got my ghosty blanket back here. This is from Target a few years ago. We actually have two of them. I had meant to <laughs> fold my other blanket and tidy up, but my little boy here is taking a snooze and I couldn't, couldn't move him. This little Bernini says hi. My little sweet boy. He my sweet boy. If you don't know, I have a bad boy and I have a sweet boy. <laughs> and of course I had to build a nice roaring fire for the tour. This is one of our <laughs> OG Halloween decorations. Probably like six or seven years old now. Little Bernine, he says hi. Hi, I'm a little Bernini boy. Oh, he's so precious. And then over on this sofa, it's not very vibey. <laughs> this doesn't go with anything, but it's comfortable. It's like this, <laughs> this bird macaroon. I do like to lounge on it, I don't care. Everything in my house is ne never gonna be perfect. And I think that's the truth for most people, but you know, we all do the best we can. Here is a look at the decor over on this shelf. Got a big glittery pumpkin here from Home Goods, I think. And just a couple little details. I know I'm not cool enough to have one of the picture frame TVs that everyone and their brother who's into home decor has. And PSA for anyone who doesn't know, my husband and I make a point to watch a spooky movie every single night or day in the month of October. This was one we watched a couple nights ago. This is both Sam and I's probably all time favorite Halloween movie. This is one I recommend for people who love like Halloween spooky vibes, but don't like horror movies typically. And it's not for kids, but it's like for baby mode spooky people <laughs> give it a watch it's so good and then this is messy somewhat this is my little workstation um i do laptop work there and i've also been working on lots of jewelry i figure now is as good as time as ever <laughs> to share share a project with you guys that i've been working on for about the last year but i have started my own little line of bracelets and what makes my bracelets better than other people's bracelets is that they are metal free which means they are water resistant they have no metal materials so you will get no tarnishing you will get no discolorations on your skin from cheap metal materials and not only that they are comfortable so all of my bracelets are smaller dainty sizes without any large bulky beads i offer multiple sizes and i love mixing them in with some of my higher end jewelry so i'm going to leave a link Link in my description box for my website so you can purchase some bracelets for yourself if you are interested so yeah that's my little workstation these are all newer bracelets I'm working on and we'll be adding very shortly and on with the tour here is a look at this shelf over here I just thought that was a pretty cool little skull bust then we've got the skeleton hand and the pumpkin got some pine cones. I always like to put this little print out. That is the Witch House in Salem, Massachusetts. If you've also been to the Witch House, leave me a witchy emoji in the comments. Ooh, the sun's just starting to come out. So if the light gets wonky, I apologize. All right, moving into my entry, my 
formal <laughs> entryway, which is the front door nobody ever uses. Here is my entryway table and my dumb reflection you can somewhat see in the mirror. Go ahead and turn this off so you can see a little bit better. I put this little creepy cloth on my antique mirror just to give it some spooky vibes. And then this tower thing I got on, I think Facebook Marketplace in the summer. And I gave it a coat of matte black spray paint. So I put some pumpkins on it and used it for display. This one is real, this one is real, and this is a class one. I love these. I think I got the a pair of these from, I, I want to say it was at home. And now we are gonna move outside to my screened-in porch, which is probably actually my favorite area that I decorated. It's low-key, I didn't do a lot, but something new I did this year was put all these little pumpkins on the beams of my porch. And I love it, I'm obsessed. I think it looks so cute. So here's just an overview of the porch. Pretty simple setup. Starting in this wicker chair, we've got this pillow. This one and the one on the sofa came from Home Depot a few years ago. They are like outdoor pillows. I think it jives very nicely with my cabana striped pad there. We've got the hammock. This gallery wall is relatively new. I had some form of a gallery wall on here for a few years, but this past spring I changed it up. I don't know if I've shared these little tarot banners I've had for a few years, and they are kind of like spooky vibes, but I keep them up all year long. I uh, added the ribbon and the tassel fringe to them. If they're still available, I will link them. That was a little DIY from a few years ago, but uh, I love my little gallery wall here. And just before anybody says anything about it being outside, all of these frames are from Ikea. All of these are reproduction prints that I didn't pay a lot of money for. There is nothing <laughs> that I am truly worried about getting gross from humidity and weather out here. Um, everything's held up pretty well for the past, you know, what has it been, four or five months it's been out here. And then we've got the other pillow over here. Again, Home Depot. Here is my little plant setup. So I added this shelf on the beam earlier this year, probably in between spring and summer at some point, to put all of my house plants and any other plants on during the warmer months. And then this table previously had a whole bunch of my plants on it, but since the weather has started to get chilly, those plants have moved inside, so it's a little bare looking. If anybody knows at what temperature I should be bringing in a fiddle leaf fig, let me know in the comments because there is very mixed information and opinions about how cold fiddle leaf figs can tolerate. Otherwise, I added some larger pie pumpkins and then I made this little planter, since it's kind of chilly, they're struggling a little bit, but it's got some uh, pansies and purple mums. I don't think this pansy is going to make it back here, that's unfortunate. And then I added some fairy lights to the shelf, which I think vibes really nicely out here. I have some more mums, so I think this one's going to be like bronzy orange. Is this one bronzy? Maybe they're both gonna be bronzy orange. I don't know. But I am looking forward to these finally opening up and sharing their little blooms with me. And I've got my parlor palm here. And then I'm gonna share with you my little secret to making sure that these plants get enough light. Since not only is my yard very shaded, this porch doesn't get a lot of direct sunlight either. So I purchased this plant light. So every morning, usually part of my routine is to get up and put this, I will put this in front of this area here and make sure I direct the lights at the plants that want bright light. So the moms without that light would definitely not get enough sunlight back here. So that is, I think, 
pretty critical to making sure I get the blooms. And besides this just being so like vibey for fall and autumn, this is normally just my favorite place to hang out. I love being back here. Like I said, I think the just the little addition of these pumpkins this year. Sorry, that's the school bus. The kids are the kids are getting off the bus, not my kids, the neighbor kids. <laughs> It's time for that afternoon little pick-me-up. So we're gonna make a cup of coffee. Um, Target this year, five bucks. Couldn't say no. And this has become my favorite coffee creamer in the last six months or so. They have a pumpkin spice one too, but I uh, they didn't have it at the store. I'm gonna grab one of my little stir sticks. We're just gonna hang out and have a cup of coffee for a minute. We'll go ahead and take a look at my bedroom. I didn't do a whole lot, but I figured I'd show you guys what I did do. Got this little spooky banner on the door but I did add a few spooky elements over here this is that um skull vodka I feel like I've had this since probably close to college but the jar is amazing and I put some fairy lights in there and then I just have a little jewelry dish with some more of my bracelets in it And then over on the tray here, I added this little pumpkin and some vibey body sprays from Bath and Body Works over the years. I only use this one occasionally. It smells so good. I wish this would come back. Otherwise, these are just kind of more decoration vibes. I don't really use them. I don't really like the smells. But otherwise, I think the, the tray is very nice and aesthetic. That's an old uh, tiny candle jar, just a little, a little ghosty. And we got some boring lotions and that's pretty much it for the bedroom. So because I didn't get around to fully decorating my bedroom, I am gonna throw it back a little bit to last year's bedroom and master bathroom decor. I also did not find the time to decorate my home office, craft studio, beauty room area. So we are gonna do another throwback with all four years I've lived in this house, or four years for Halloween at least, and take a look at all the decor I've done in that room in the past four years. So here's a little look-see at that.
All right, we have moved outside. I'm gonna walk you guys through most of my outdoor decorations. Now I will say this year, I did not go as hard as I have in the past. For me, it is about quality over quantity. I will never be the person who just throws decor into my yard, just hodgepodge to get it done. And I'd rather have something visually look really strong and just have less than a bunch of nonsense everywhere. So that was in my soapbox about Halloween decorations. Here's this little corner of my driveway. Got a big old metal jack-o'-lantern. The pumpkin, I think, came from Hobby Lobby, but Sam painted the face on that a few years ago. I planted up this mum here this year. What is this? This looks like snot on this leaf, on these. What is that? That's freaking weird. It's like plasticky, filmy. What the? I've never seen that in my life. If anybody knows what that is, tell me. I am very intrigued. It's weird. Okay, anyway, let's move on. I put my child, one of my child ghost blow molds out. Here are my window boxes that I plant planted. Well, I planted them, but I built them earlier in the spring. They are holding up well. My summer annuals are still thriving in here. The only thing that kind of hasn't held up the best is the caladium. The uh, impatience have kind of taken over, but otherwise I was really happy with how these came out. Sorry, this is turning into a little bit of a plant tour too, but and here is the other one over here. It'll probably be in a few nights that these start to really dwindle down. Again, the caladium's kind of you know, the caladium might have gotten too cold, actually. I think that's one of the first things that goes with chilly weather. That and a surprise the sweet potato vine hasn't kicked the bucket yet. And around the corner to my porch. Here in this corner, here's my cat corner. <laughs> um, this little welcome sign that came from Amazon. I love this little kitty so much. It reminded me of my little Bernini. So, and then this metal cat came from, I don't know, last year we got it. And I painted it to look like my cat, Abaddon, who is black, but has some, uh, white detailing here so we added that and we painted that and i painted the eyes orange i don't remember what color they were but again <laughs> had to make it look like abaddon hanging up we've got sam who is the main character from that movie trick or treat that i just was showing and talking to you guys about if you are into spooky halloween things you've probably seen him around that is pretty old but i think it came from spirit halloween down here we've got some other little metal decorations i've got another mum here potted up in this jack-o-lantern pot i left my spring summer urns out here really didn't want to fuss with them too much but i added some little gourds and pumpkins to the base of the rocks these are faux really old now they're actually starting to get kind of gross and i probably need to replace them come the spring so then i put some wire fairy lights through the topiaries here trick-or-treat doormat from a few years ago my halloween wreath here i made this probably close to five years ago at this point i still really love it i kind of want to make another one just because I really do enjoy making wreaths. I actually probably need to glue some of these things back in here. But anyway, okay. Sorry, I babble on a little bit. Here are our trick-or-treat children. Let's see if they even work. Where's the button? Here we go. Trick or treat. <laughs> Don't you look scary tonight? God, his pants are down. I hope we see some ghosts and goblins tonight. Give us something good and sweet. Oh my, I had no idea that his pants are down. Oh my God, you're flashing the neighborhood, boy. Gotta fix him. <laughs> I could probably tell Sam to come do that since this is his business. This came from Target this year. And of course, Sam painted it to look like Abaddon. <laughs> 
a little white around the feet and the chest area. And then normally I wrap these leaf garlands around the door, but I decided to do something a little different this year and wrap the columns. They also have orange lights through them. And then on this side, we've just got one of the old skeleton friends and this little ghost, which I think came from Target a few years ago. So that's pretty much all that's going on on my porch. And now we are gonna move on to my main display over here. I also need to show off. I'm trying to give my neighbors privacy too. I don't wanna you know, show off the whole neighborhood here. This is my new pride and joy. This is my Japanese maple. I need to uh, mulch around there to make sure it stays nice and cozy this winter. This is an emperor Japanese maple that I picked up. Actually, I will say Sam bought me this as a nice treat and I am absolutely in love with it. It took me forever to plant it because I couldn't figure out where I wanted to put it. This window right here is our bedroom. I would move <laughs> the pot around in here and go up and look out the window because I wanted to make sure I had a nice view of it right out the window. This thing will get about 20 feet tall to 20 feet wide. And now for the piece de resistance. Oh, this guy fell over. It's actually not the first time that's happened. He needs a, a sandbag in there. Here is our main <laughs> seen this year which is a spooky graveyard with some jack-o-lanterns and we got skeletons so a bunch of these gravestones sam and i actually make by hand We've got some more in the garage that we're in the process of working on which i will show you guys in a little bit here is sam's for this year if you are a family or friend and find yourself in our graveyard with a slightly offensive gravestone that means we love you. <laughs> so I will show you guys what this looks like at night, obviously, but I wanted to show you the details. Some of the gravestones mixed in here are like foam ones you can buy at craft stores. They're left over from before we started making our own, but we kind of made them over to distress them even more and make them more creepy, spooky looking. I, again, I will give you guys more information in a little bit, but Sam made this guy this year. So that's half of a skeleton body. There is some plywood under there. This was made with foam spray, spray paint, and there's some real dirt on it. So he'd be looking like he'd busting out of the ground. Got another little mum planter. I did incorporate some of these lanterns in here for more of a vibe, which I like. And then I don't love the white cord on these pumpkins, but that's kind of all I had. This gravestone is new this year. This came from Home Depot. And again, we zhuzhed it up with a little bit of our DIY method of distressing them. This was the first gravestone I made, which was like three years ago. This is a reference to the Fear Street movies on Netflix. Another really good, fun, spooky movies if you guys haven't seen that. And then I only got around to hanging one of my cheese cloth ghosties. He kind of got a little bit of an upgrade because I put some wire in there to make his arms stick out better. But I think he looks great. I meant to do another one, but I haven't got to it. And if I don't, that's okay. I think him by himself looks, looks pretty good. Especially when there's a nice little breeze. He'd just be going and flowing. And here's our newest biggie big guy. Uh, this is the, I think it's called the Inferno Pumpkin Man from Home Depot. Actually, we kind of talked about it being a female, so I think her name might be Morticia to jive with, you know, Mortimer, who is the giant skeleton. Our favorite part is definitely the, the, the chest part, which you guys will see at night. It like lights up like it's flames. It's pretty awesome. So this area is a little bit barren. Normally, this is where we put out the graveyard scene, but like I said, I switched things up a bit. 
the jackal, or excuse me, the scarecrow is out with a new head. If you are new here, every single year, Sam will carve a new head for the jack-o'-lantern. I think this one is very cute, creepy cute. Um, he needs a little bit more zhuzhing. I need to get, usually I put some corn stalks behind him and he'll get wrapped with some light. So I still need to do that. And then this guy is new. We picked him up when we were on a trip this summer. His little things spin in the wind. I think he needs to find a different place somewhere in my yard, but he makes us laugh so much. He's so cute. I just got sidetracked by these mushrooms growing here. Look how wild those look. Look at these ones too. There are so many mushrooms in my yard right now. They're so weird and creepy looking. We are headed over to see the big boy. He is just on his own this year, chilling. I put some spotlights on him, but he's the OG. There he is, Mr. Mortimer. Love him. And then just back there, little friend. I meant to mention <laughs> his face is kind of cut off but if in case you didn't know you can buy a three foot version of the 12 foot skeleton at home depot and here he is sorry for the reflection but he's standing in this window here waving to everybody that is sam's room and i'm sure he's in there watching a spooky movie the video here definitely does not do the Inferno Pumpkin Man justice, like the glowing light in his chest looks so much cooler in real life that it's not translating at all on video. And honestly, his eyes look kind of stupid on here too. <laughs> you guys are still here with me watching the video. I just want you to know I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. I hope everyone has had an amazing spooky season so far and has a happy Halloween this year. If you are interested in listening to me blab on about our DIY foam gravestones, there's going to be a little bit of that coming up next. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you love holiday decorating, DIY projects, gardening, and general lifestyle and home content. Make sure you give me a follow on Instagram for more frequent posts and content. And thanks again, guys. I will see you in my next video. Bye! We are in my garage and just for anyone who's interested in our gravestone process, <laughs> if you're not, it can be done with a video. This is my sister's gravestone she made when she was here. So, and then here is one of mine. <laughs> Again, I told you they have to be slightly offensive. Anyway, here is it before what they look like before you make them look all old and distressed. This is purple insulation foam. I'm going to leave the video tutorial that we originally watched to make these because it's super clear, super easy to follow, super informative. So check the description box for that. Here is another gravestone that we bought pre-made this year. This is from Home Depot. And the key to making these is, where is it? Here it is, dry lock. This is what we put on the foam and any of the other faux gravestones to give it the, the concrete texture. I can't believe how much the like old, like the old foam gravestones, like these came from Michaels or something year ago. After we added a coat of dry lock and Sam did some distressing on them, they look so much better than <laughs> when we bought them at the store. Those like pre-made foam gravestones just look so chintzy. And if you have the bandwidth, I can't recommend enough to give them an upgrade to take your graveyard scene to the next level.